Hey, what's up? What's up, DFS players? DFS five pack. Bellman Kostrowski here, back again, ready to talk a little Wednesday night baseball. I love when we get the single baseball slated on Wednesday, especially with the NBA playoffs now up and running. Um, not too exciting basketball games last night. A little bit disappointing. Chalk went off in baseball last night, so if you tried to play a little bit different, it wasn't the night for you. But that'll happen from time to time. That's why those guys are chalk. Amen to all that. And as we like to say, we got a new slate today. Excited to break this one down with you. Yes, sir, Bub. Let's do it. Let's talk <laughs> about it. Today's about just Jack when it comes to pitching. Actually, there's a bunch of good pitching options. We'll get into a couple of them. He made the cover today, and we're going to run some drafters drafts later today, guys. Sims, I know you requested a draft yesterday, but we had some other things on the works. Today, we will get after it. I'm thinking 3 p.m. Eastern today, 2 p.m. Central. If any of you uh, folks listening want to get in on the fun, we can go deep today. So we could run maybe a 10, 12-player draft. We just have to single it up at the pitcher at that point. Uh, hit me up. Promo code is dfs 5 Pat. There's a link to a Facebook group down there below. Come have some fun, guys. It's a good time over at Drafters. We're thinking 10 bucks a pop. Let's rock this thing. Let's get it. And I will say I will take full responsibility for yesterday, Sims. I had a little leak in my basement, so we could not start until a little bit later than usual. So we did not have time for a drafters, but we will make up for it today. All right. He's a fellow Cleveland guy, isn't he? Yep. Fellow Ohio guy, for sure. Ohio at the very, very least, guys. Memberships available through the website. Subscribe to the station if you're new to it. As mentioned, and pretty much anybody with two eyes can see from the cover, we're talking Jack Flaherty today. So there is... There's several good pitching options. I mean, you could make an argument for upwards of 10 guys today, maybe even a little bit more if you're a little loosey-goosey with who you like to play with, which is all right when it comes to the game of baseball. But we're going to talk Jack Flaherty, and I think it specifically comes to his high floor today. So uh, as bad as the Pirates are, they don't actually K a ton, but their offense is truly pathetic. So when we want to talk about a high floor, like Flaherty, he had a bad first game. He was awful in the first inning against the Marlins. It has really just been excellent since then. You know, we're big Flaherty guys. You know, he's 7-0, and making a case for the Cy Young this season. He's in a really good spot to get in the win today. Like, I don't think he's dropping 40 on us. For, you know, like we get sometimes with potential of like an Urias or, you know, Max Scherzer or something like that. But I feel damn, damn good about his floor today because the Pirates offense is truly pathetic. Yeah, you said he's not going to drop 40 on us. Well, if it were me and you in the lineup, he probably would drop 40 yeah, that's plus true. on us. That's a good point. But um, you're right, man. I feel almost embarrassed that I was on Washington bats like that third start of the year after he looked a little bit suspect. That slate, again, I'll give myself a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. It was a crazy slate. There were a ton of good pitching options, not many hitting options. That said, ever since then, I've been kicking myself because we're huge Flaherty fans. We've been on him you know, for a couple years now. We both are – Big fans of not only his stuff, but the cut of his jib in a good spot. Like, gives you that nice, warm, and fuzzy feeling at home against Pittsburgh. You're right. He doesn't have the highest upside on the slate, but that's okay. He's got the highest floor, in my opinion, with really nice upside as well. At 9,700, I think he's a nice look in all formats. A guy uh, I'm looking at building my, my lineup surrounding. He's a good pitcher. Uh, listening to Adam Wainwright gush over him on the nationally televised broadcast game last week. You know, obviously they make a point to interview better pitchers. And Wainwright's like, I could tell day one. He goes, there's, you know, really good SP. Some teams have like a good SP one, but he's not a legit ace. Wainwright's like, I could tell with this kid 30 minutes after meeting to meeting him that for a long time, he is a legit number one dude. And when you hear about another, you know, former Cy Young runner up multiple times, whatever like that, talk about a guy like this. It makes you feel even better about just who he is as a baseball player. I love hearing that. Yeah, Wainwright's got a lot of credibility his, in his own right. And, yeah, he might not be, like, the elite ace, uh, like a Jacob deGrom or a Garrett Cole even, but he is a number one for sure. You know, I mentioned it kind of in the same regards as, like, Giolito the other day. He's better than Giolito in my mind. They're, they're similar. And they're, they're in the same ballpark, though. Giolito might have better DFS upside on any given day because he has some of those just dominant 14, 15 strikeout type of games. But, like, if I was a GM and I was making Agreed. my team right now, I would take Flaherty over Giolito, and that wouldn't even be a question. I agree with that. All right, next up. So let's talk about Hernandez from the Boston Red Sox, 3,300, second base and outfield eligibility. And I will start by saying this to me is a lot like G-Man Choi from yesterday, in my opinion. Like, I think he's a cash lock. Projected to be the highest owned player on the slate from an offensive perspective. He's got dual eligibility. I know Boston guys are getting a little bit of love today, and this is a lot about his price tag at only 3300 Stripling is 
meh. He's not the worst pitcher in the league, but you certainly, I get why going up against him today, there are Red Sox players getting love. And like I recommended Choi for cash games yesterday. Choi was really good. Homer, big points. Uh, I still would have faded him in GPPs. And I think the same thing applies here today. Just because we brought up Choi for cash and he was good for cash games and would have been good in any format, I still think the fate of Hernandez is smart today. I think it's very similar in that essence. I think you lock him in in cash games, but knowing how popular it is, I'm definitely interested in the GPP fade. Yeah, this is a classic one for me. If you're stacking Boston, throw him in there. If you're not, probably wouldn't look to use him as a one-off at this high ownership in a really popular stack. I mean, again, I get it. He's leading off. He's 3,300. He's got dual position eligibility. He's a decent hitter. Makes a lot of sense. In tournaments, he is far from a lock. I agree wholeheartedly. Moving along, so we're going to get over to your home run call today. A little man called Miguel Andahar, who has been stuffing the stat sheet with singles lately, which are buying signs for a bigger day coming. No one's going to look at Andahar hitting 172, no homers, only one RBI, really low OPS, only three DK points per game. But we know who this guy is. Only a couple of years ago, we saw him absolutely tear it up. That, you know, Gio Urshela is now the full-time, you know, third baseman. And that's not because... You know, Andahar hasn't been good. It's because Gio Urshela was just amazing in the opportunity he had. Andahar still has legit power. I've seen all his at-bats recently, finally seeing the ball well. Two singles yesterday, five singles in his past four games. He's going deep today. The Yankees are my top stack on the board. Love him and his price play at 2700 Like, I'm just excited talking about this. I love this slate. Assuming the Yankees stay low on, like, I love this slate. You got it, guys. You know those Yanks got some power. All right, let's move over back over to cash game play. Let's talk about Mitch Money Haniger. So I'm going to go out on a limb. I say I doubt Tariq Skubo goes full Spencer Turnbull today, and I think the Mariners got some runs in them. Haniger's having a great season, right? Batting average isn't you know great, but the 12 home runs, 29 RBIs, really hitting for a lot of power. And so far this year, Tariq Skubo has been suffering when it comes to the home run ball. So Haniger's lined up in a good spot to go yard once again today. Uh, not a lot of crush spots on this slate where offenses that you're really, really going to love, love. I know you love the low and Yankees, but like, even the chalk offense today have holes in them. So Seattle is going to be one of those teams that has a little bit of popularity applied to their name today. And Haniger's going to be my favorite because, well, he's their best player. Yeah, agreed. He, he looks really good here. Again, he was too cheap for much of the beginning of the year. He's more in line where he should be priced at 4500 having a great year, a ton of extra base hits, second in the AL in home runs, tied with Jose Ramirez, I'm pretty sure now. A ton to like here in all formats, cash games, tournaments. If you're stacking Seattle, he's a top piece. In cash games, he's one of the top bats on the slate. Next up, Adolis Garcia. So, I mean, you study the ownership uh, that comes out daily a little bit more than I do. Like, does this guy ever get any love? No, not really, like – Chalk, chalk love. He always gets, and he can he has, you know, since the beginning of the year, gotten more and more love because he's been really cheap. But again, Texas isn't a team that people use a lot. And when you're not in stacks that people like to use, use you don't get a ton of love. People like to use pitchers against Texas, and I get it. However, Texas is, you know, starting to be a little bit better recently. And even if you don't like Texas as a whole, which I get, you know, why would you like Texas as a whole? Garcia is just having a monster year. Crushing righties. Kluber has had a hard time against righties. You know, you look at his his game log, it's really, really impressive. He's averaging more points than Aaron Judge, Xander Bogart. That's kind of a simplistic way to look at it. It still holds some merit to me. I mean, the guy's averaging over 10 DK points a game. I love him at lower ownership in tournaments in a sneaky spot. What do you get rewarded for in DK? We've said it before. We'll say it again. Home runs and stolen bases. This guy's got 11 home runs, so he's one under second place in the AL. And he, I think he's got at least six or seven stolen bases. I got him in like all my year-long leagues now. I uh, just picked him up to stream him one day, and he's been so good I couldn't get rid of him. Yep. Amen to all that. So that's what we got for today, guys. We'll drop some playoff NBA info on for you for just a little bit right here. Uh, hopefully everybody has wonderful luck and brings home the bacon tonight. And if you're playing in the day slates, best of luck to those as well. Thanks a lot, guys.